to the Super Bowl tonight. We're going to worship at church today, right? You got to be as excited as we're going to be tonight to watch the, watch the game. So uh, I'm just so thankful that you're here today, guests and members alike. I uh, guess especially we welcome you. We hope you feel right at home this morning. I want you to just worship with us. Uh, that's what we're here to do is just live the name of the Lord high in the name of Jesus today. So uh, that, that's the goal. That is the purpose, the whole reason we are here. So uh, the stage is getting full behind me, and I'm excited about that, aren't you? Yeah. They sound good. I heard more than I was going to listen and see with them from the, from the chair this morning. But uh, uh, they, they sound great, and I know we're going to have a great time of worship. So I'm going to quit talking so we can get to it. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Ask Him to bless our service. Uh, as we do that, we need to remember those among us who are sick. I know you've got people in your hearts this morning who are uh, struggling, sick, one way or another. Angel's not feeling well this morning, so that's why she's not here. And I had a friend at school whose niece, um, uh, we told her we'd pray for her this morning. Her niece uh, has gallstones. She's also pregnant, and they've got to remove the gallstones. And they're going to take the baby before they can remove the gallstones. And so uh, it's a little early for that baby to be born. So I told her we would pray for her um, this morning too. So anyway, uh, we all have some needs on our hearts and uh, some people that we know need our prayers. So let's remember them. And then let's just lift the Lord's name on high today. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this another opportunity, Lord, to come into your house and worship you, Father. Lord, I'm just overflowing with excitement today, just bubbling over with praise about your love for us. As, as we're going to sing about your love this morning, we're going to hear from your word about your love this morning, Father. I pray that you would speak to our hearts. Lord, I pray if anybody was here in the service this morning or watching online that feels unloved or perhaps has not known your love for them, that today it would be made real to them, Lord, and they would experience your love anew and afresh, Father. Lord, you are so good to us. You've loved us. Uh, like no other could. And so, Father, help us be remind, reminded of that. May our hearts overflow with thankfulness as we worship you today, remembering your love for us. We pray for those who are on our hearts this morning, those who are sick and not feeling well, for this young lady who's having the baby and the gallstones. Lord, we pray that you protect the baby's health and the mother as well, Father, during the surgery, and allow everything to go well there. Uh, Lord, others on our hearts this morning, you know every need that we have on our heart. And Father, we pray for these that we're burdened with today. We bring them before you, as you said, and lay them at your feet, trusting your perfect will. Lord, we thank you in all things and for all things, and especially for your love that you showed for us, to us through your son, Jesus Christ. Help us to sing with all we have and praise you for that love now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand, church, and sing. So this first song, I kind of forgot that. we practiced so we threw this together um, this morning and i think it sounds great it's a great song to start off valentine's day weekend at a church um, but guys feel free to get rowdy i'm sure a lot of you guys are going to get rowdy during the super bowl tonight when your team scores right now let's get rowdy for the lord because like i think that he's scoring in this church right now amen amen, amen. like i can't it can't just be the stage that believes in this let's hear an amen Amen. Let's go.
you. <laughs> this next song, uh, man, this song's like 11 years old now, and it makes me feel old because I've been playing this song since I've been playing Christian music, and it's still one of my favorites. Um, I picked this song out before I knew that tomorrow was Valentine's Day. It is tomorrow, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so that was just coincidence, uh, but this is one called How He Loves. Sing it along. first time in months, we have a piano player. 
But I didn't notice it. Uh, and then, thank you. Hey, good job, buddy. So, and then another incredibly talented person that we have in this church, Jeremy, is going to do a solo for us.
and praise team for a great worship time this morning. Jeremy, thank you for that powerful reminder of God's love. That was an awesome time of worship today. Thank you all so very much. Would you just sing this with me? I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King, in what Thank you again, praise team. Thank you again, Jeremy and congregation for your worship this morning. If you have your Bibles, you're going to want to open it up to the book of Romans chapter 5. And Children's Church is going to step out in the back right now. So if you'd like to go with Ms. Carol to Children's Church, you can go with her uh, right now. We're going to talk about God's love this morning. As you can imagine, we've been focusing on opportunities and being excited and this morning, we're going to talk about being excited about God's love. Isaac's already reminded all of us guys, in case you didn't know, tomorrow's Valentine's Day. Whoever decided to make Valentine's Day and Super Bowl the same weekend, that was a bad idea. It had to be a man because the lady's going to be like tonight, hey, let's go out and eat our Valentine's supper since tomorrow we got to work. And you're going to be like, uh-uh, the game's on. So there's going to be fights tonight because of this. So I, I, hope, it, I hope not. But uh, anyway. Uh, I've been, I'm going to watch the game tonight, and I know you probably are too. And I've been trying to butter Angela up all week. I shared on the Wednesday night a little bit. Uh, she works in my school in the afternoons with small groups, and so um, we go by her classroom where she's working. Um, every time I take my class to lunch, she's in there to have kids at that time. So every day as we walk by, I've, I told my kids I'm going to tell her a, a Roses are Red poem. And so they can't wait to hear what I'm going to say. So I've had several that I've, I've stuck my hand in the door and said to her. The first day I stuck my hand in her door and I said, Roses are red, violets are violet. Here's my number, why don't you dial it? <laughs> and she went, whatever. And my kids go, rejected. <laughs> and then I said, Roses are red, daffodils are yellow. I'll be your, uh, you'll be my woman and I'll be your fellow. <laughs> she liked that one. And then her favorite one was this, roses are red, violets are blue, Corona shut down everything except my love for you. <laughs> I got a hug for that one. <laughs> well, let me tell you two more uh, stories of love, kind of. Uh, the first one was about three, three bachelors. They were sitting together and they were talking about their dream girl. And one of them said to the other two, he said, you know, they say that opposites attract. And the other bachelor said, exactly, that's why I'm looking for a woman with money. <laughs> there was another young man, he found the woman of his dreams and decided to ask her to marry him. And she said yes. Well, she would not met his mom yet. He decided he was going to play a little game. And so he told his mom, look, I've, I've asked a girl to marry me. And she said yes. And I want you to meet my fiance that I'm going to play a game, Mom. I'm going to bring three girls over tonight, and I want you to pick the one that you think is my fiance. She said, that's weird, but okay. And so he brought three beautiful girls to, to his house that night, and his mom fixed dinner, and they all talked. They had a great time over dinner. And afterwards, uh, he set off three of them down on the couch, and he said, now, Mom, I want you to guess which one did I ask to marry me, and she said yes. She said, oh, I bet the one in the middle. And he said, why? How do you know that? She said, I'll fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you've not had that experience. But <laughs> Those weren't really very sweet love stories. But we know the sweetest love story of all Christians, right? I heard Pat tell about it on her, on her Facebook post. She told about a love story. She posted about the love that God has for the world and for you on her Facebook post and sang a song too. We know God's the sweetest, God's the sweetest love story that we could ever have is God's love for us. The fact that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to take our place, to die in our place, 
to come into this world. And it's that love that we're going to talk about this morning as we look here at Romans chapter 5. And we're going to read the first nine verses. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith and do this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man someone even there to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by the blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. Lord, I, we are just so blessed as a church to have such talented, gifted people that you've blessed us with to stand on the stage and lead us in worship each week. I'm just amazed. Uh, as I sat there this morning, I looked up here and saw the talent. The love for you shining in their eyes, leading us in worship. I thank you for that, for blessing us in such a tremendous way. And for John playing piano today, and Anna joining us on guitar. Lord, we're just so thankful for them. Father, we are thankful most of all for your son, Jesus. That's how you show your love for us. We're going to see today. And Father, I pray when we walk out of the sanctuary this morning, we would understand your love better than we ever have before. And in turn, may we be willing to share that love with this world more than ever before. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to give you six reasons to be excited about the love of God today. And so that's where we'll begin with the first reason. And it comes from verse 1 here in Romans chapter 5. And the first reason we have to be excited about love, God's love is a pretty awesome one. Uh, God's love gives me precious peace with God. God's love gives me precious peace with God. Now, there is an outline in your bulletin, as always, if you'd like to jot some notes down and follow along this morning. Verse 1 says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of the blood that Jesus Christ shed on Calvary's cross, I am justified by my faith, and I have peace with God. Now, what does it mean to be justified by our faith? Justified means this. And we can just get a, just an understanding of this alone. We won't shout run out this morning. Because justified means that we are made righteous in the eyes of God. We're made righteous in the eyes of God through the blood of Jesus and our faith in the blood that Jesus shed for us as the Son of God. We are made, we're justified by that. We're made righteous in God's eyes. There's nothing righteous about me except for the blood of Jesus. Amen? God has no reason to look at me and say, Scott is righteous or Isaac is righteous or Pat is righteous. But he looks at you if you've pleaded the blood of Jesus over your life. And he looks at you and inserts your name here. He says, you are righteous in my eyes because of your faith in the blood that Jesus shed for you. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have that peace of knowing that you've been justified. And God, the Holy God, sees you as righteous. You're justified. Did I hear a hallelujah? You are forgiven. Did I hear an amen? You have precious peace with God. Can I get to raise the roof this morning? Amen. Amen. Put our hands in the air like we just don't care. Like Isaac said, we're going through tonight. Amen. We're going to be excited tonight. Let's be excited this morning too. Your soul is in perfect peace with God this morning as a Christian. The old song says, when peace like a river attendeth my way, or when sorrows like sea billows roll, Whatever my life, in other words, whatever happens, thou hast taught me to say, what? It is well. 
It is well with my soul. Praise the Lord. Why? Because you have peace with God. God sees you as justified. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. How is your faith in Jesus? How is your faith in the blood of Jesus making you justified? Is it strong? Is it weak? That's a question between you and God. How's your faith? 1 John 4 10 tells us this. Herein, or this is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation or the payment for our sins. There's verse, this verse says, Do you want to know what love is? It's not that we love God, but the fact that God loved us enough to send His Son to die. For our sins. And that makes me want to love God all the more, doesn't it, you? That God loves you so much, He sent His Son to die, to pay the price, to be the payment for our sin. Thank you, Jesus. Turn to somebody this morning and say, Thank God for His love. And the second reason to be excited about God's love this morning is this God's love gives me amazing access to his throne. Look at verse 2. We have amazing access to his throne. Man, this verse is powerful. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. That verse is so powerful. I love that verse right there. Uh, Kayla just said a minute ago about God's grace. If grace is an ocean, we're all sinking. Uh, if God's grace is an ocean, then we are all sinking in it. This verse says it. The way it says we're standing in it. It's like it's cuddling at our feet. Look at verse 2 again. By whom? Who is whom? Well, it's Jesus. We just said we're justified by his blood. By whom also we have access by faith. That means we believe that Jesus' blood uh, paid the price for our sins. We put our faith and trust in him as our Lord and Savior. When we do that, uh, we have what? We or in this grace, grace that what? Grace that leads us to salvation, and we stand in this grace. It's a grace that overflows uh, over us. It's like it's pebbling at our feet so that we can share that grace with others. God's grace is an amazing grace. But also, let's think about this verse this way. We have access by faith. We have amazing access to his throne before the crucifixion. There was a veil at the temple that came between God and man. It separated the Holy of Holies from the rest of the temple. And only the high priest could enter once a year after the sacrifice had been made for the sin of the people. The Holy of Holies held the Ark of the Covenant and it held God's very presence. So there was a separation between man and God's presence. But do you remember what happened when Jesus shed his blood? When Jesus died on the cross, he cried out, it is finished. The sky became dark, the ground trembled, and that veil was torn in two from top to bottom. That was a representation of the fact that through the blood of Jesus Christ, the fact that he died on the cross, that we've been justified, God sees us as righteous, and so now we can enter into the very presence of God to his throne. We now have access to the holiest place there is, and that is God's presence. How is that? Well, Hebrews 9 11 and 12 reminds us again. But Christ become a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not one made by hands, that's to say not of the old tabernacle, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves that had to be sacrificed so that the priest could enter the Holy of Holies, but Jesus Christ rather by his own blood, the blood that he shed, through that he entered for once for all of us into the holy place, having attained eternal redemption for us. In other words, if you place your faith in Jesus Christ, eternally you are seen as justified. Eternally you've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Eternally you can go to God in prayer. Anytime you need to talk to the Lord, you have that eternal promise that because of your faith in the blood of Jesus, you have free and open access to God. Anytime, night or day, we can pray directly to God. We can speak personally to the creator of the universe. We can go to God in prayer. We can have a little talk with Jesus. And hallelujah, we don't have to confess our sins to a priest. We got a direct line to heaven, amen, because of Jesus. And that line ain't never busy. God will never put you on hold. You'll never get an automated answering system. He's there. <laughs> When you need to talk to him, he's always there. 
Not only that, but God wants us to talk to him often. As a matter of fact, he says, pray, talk to me without ceasing. I don't want you to stop talking to me, God says. God loves for his children to talk to him when they need help. And God loves for his children to talk to him like we did this morning when we just want to give him a little bit of praise. Don't take for granted this great privilege we have through the love of God. Here's a third reason we can be excited about God's love. God's love gives me the help of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> God's love gives me the help of the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 5 there in chapter 5. It says, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. And that's that's a, a, a phrase that we may have trouble understanding. The love of God is shed abroad. As I was studying, I came across a great example of to help me understand what that exactly means. And the example was this. Imagine a giant, beautiful, colorful oak tree in the fall. <laughs> and what happens? Those leaves begin to fall, don't they? And they fall and they just totally cover the ground around the tree. It shed abroad its leaves. And through the Holy Spirit, God's love is shed abroad in our heart. In other words, His love covers our entire heart. It just falls on us through the Holy Spirit. Uh, and, 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 and it means that also that once it covers our heart, we understand God's love. And we understand that we're covered by God's love. Then we take, that, we take God's love and we shed it abroad around us, right? We take what the Holy Spirit did in our heart and we share it. We don't keep it to ourselves, but we share it. We shed it abroad then. Remember what Jesus told us in Acts chapter 1. He says, you're going to receive power when the Holy Ghost would come upon you so that you can testify of my love to the uttermost parts of the earth. So, number one, be filled with God's love. Let it shed abroad in your heart. And be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then you'll shed his love abroad all around you. You'll share his great love with somebody. Jesus calls that Holy Spirit that, that comes to us our helper and our comforter in John 14, 26. Jesus says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I've said to you. Have you experienced that? The Holy Spirit speaking to your heart, giving you the right word or leading you in a certain direction. I'll, I'll share again what I shared Wednesday night. That happened to me just this past Tuesday. I run by Food City after school to grab a couple things we needed at the house. And as I was making my way into the store, there was a, a young lady standing outside. And, uh, and she was probably homeless or uh, she, she had a backpack and she looked a little rough. She was young, probably 20. And as I was walking into the store, here's the word she said to me. She said, do you have a light? <laughs> well, I don't smoke. And I said, no, I don't, I don't have a light. I'm sorry. I went on the store. I didn't think anything else about it. Got what I needed. Got in the car and started driving down the road. And then the Holy Spirit started speaking to my heart. And they drew her words back to my mind, which were, do you have a light? <laughs> and the Holy Spirit said to me, how many times have you stood in the pulpit and said, well, you are to be the light of the world. And you told her, you didn't have a light. You didn't tell her anything about Jesus. I got convicted by the Holy Spirit. So I was halfway down the road. I turned right around, drove right back to Food City. She walked to the other side of the parking lot. I pulled this little bit of cash out of my wallet. And I pulled up to her. And I said, look. I said, you asked me if I had a light. And I said, no, but that's not true. I said, I have a light. His name is Jesus Christ. And I told her just a little bit about how Jesus loved her. And how she had a God, whatever she was going through, whatever tough time she might be facing, that she had a God who loved her. And didn't want her to forget that. And, and I did what God told me, whatever she did with that money and whatever happened after that, it's between her and God. But I did what God told me to do. The Holy Spirit, Jesus says here in John 14, 26, He'll teach you all things and bring all things into remembrance. He brought back to the remembrance that I'm going to be the light of the world and so I could go share a light. I didn't have this kind of light, but I have this kind of light. Amen. That I could go share with the girl who needed to hear about that more than she needed a cigarette. Praise God for the help of the Holy Ghost. Just listen to the Holy Spirit speaking to you. He will. He will. Jesus said he will. He said he'll speak to you. He'll teach you. He'll bring things to your remembrance, whatever you've learned from the Lord. So trust the Holy Ghost 
and be thankful for the God, that God's love gives you the help of the Holy Ghost. Fourthly this morning, God's love gives you super strength when you're weak. God's love gives you super strength when you're weak. Look at verse 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Another old song says, without him I can do nothing. Without him I'd surely fail. Without him I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. You know that song, and it's so true. There's such true words found in that old hymn, without him. And I don't even want to imagine a life without Christ. I can't imagine waking up in the morning and trying to go through all that I have to do during the day without the strength of Christ strengthening me. I couldn't do it on my own. I don't want to imagine a life without Christ. I'd have no hope. I'd have no peace. I'd be brokenhearted all the time. So I ask you, do you have that hope? See, the end of that hymn, Without Him, asks a question. It says, Jesus, oh Jesus, do you know Him today? Do not turn Him away. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, without Him, how lost I would be. Do you know Him today? Because without Him, you're lost. Without Him, you're without hope. Without Jesus, there's nothing but death, the grave, and hell. So trust Him this morning. Without Him, I can do nothing but Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me, who strengthens me. Whatever I face, whatever you face, we can remember because God loves us. We don't have to face it in our own strength. We face it trusting Christ. I know you've experienced this in your life too. I can't hardly do anything in my own strength, but it's not my strength I'm depending on. Amen? I can tell you one thing for sure. I couldn't stand behind this prophet and say anything worthwhile because there's nothing worthwhile in me worth saying. The only thing good that comes out of my mouth is what God puts there for me to say, and the Holy Spirit leads me to say. So it can't be my strength and my whatever that I'm depending on. It has to be Christ who strengthens me. How do you make it through trials and tribulations in your life? How do you make it through them? By the strength that Christ gives you, trusting on Him, leaning on Him. Are you tired this morning? Are you depressed? Are you worn out? Are you just down and out? Then quit trying to live in your own strength. And trust Christ. Live in His strength. Jesus said to us, when we're feeling that way, come unto me, all ye who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest, He says. He'll strengthen you. He'll give you rest so that you can get back up and get to work for Him again. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. Find your strength in Him. Let God's love be the source of your strength. Number five. Fifth reason we have to be excited about God's love is this. And this is a good one. It gives me a liberated life through the blood of Jesus. A liberated life through the blood of Jesus. Rodney talked about this Wednesday. We were talking about why it's so good to be a part of the body of Christ. He said freedom. Freedom. That's what he was talking about. You're free in Christ. You've got a free gift from Jesus Christ. But the freedom we have, we're liberated. We have a liberated life. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Verse 8 in Romans 5 says, But God commendeth. That word commendeth. Take, uh, take, take this in the, into your heart this morning. God commendeth. In other words, he showed that he considered us worthy of. So let's say that because that's what commendeth means. But God showed that he considered us worthy of his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners... Christ died for us. Man, that's powerful. God considered us worthy of his love when he looked at us and saw that we were sinners. And he sent his son to pay the price for our sin. <laughs> Romans 6, 22 and 23 says, But now having been made free from sin and become servants to God, you have fruit into your holiness and in the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let me ask you this. Have you been set 
free this morning. If you've been set free, we ought to shout about it, amen? We ought to get excited about God's love. We ought to say, I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed. Praise the Lord. I want you to do it. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed. Praise the Lord. Now turn to somebody else and tell them you're redeemed, if you're redeemed this morning. I'm redeemed. Praise the Lord. Some of you saying, Scott, you're crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I don't need you repeat. Don't repeat that now. Here's something that is crazy. There'll be, I think I heard 80,000 people in a football stadium tonight. They're going to be yelling as loud as they can. They're going to be crammed together. They're going to be shouting. They're going to be cheering. They're going to be at the top of their lungs cheering for their team. And they don't care about who hears them over a game. And we come to church and we worship the one who died to save us and, and give us eternal life. And we act like we offend somebody if we get a little happy and shout or something. And we get a little excited, raise our hand. Those of you, they won't think I'm Pentecostal to raise my hand in church. I heard somebody say the Pentecostals got the worship right, the Baptists got the theology right. We got to let it loose a little bit, Christian. Amen? Amen. We got it all backwards. We got it backwards. It's okay to shout, I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, I'm redeemed. Hey, we got to practice for the big game. It's easy to talk to somebody in here and tell them, I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed, praise the Lord. But it's not in here that they need to hear it because they probably redeemed too. It's out there that somebody needs to hear about what it means to be redeemed. So we got to loosen up a little bit. We're free to, and we live in a country where we're free to talk about God's wonderful love. As much as we want to, but we sit quietly. It's because that's what we practice doing. Hmm. We'll step on some toes. We sit quietly in church, twiddling our thumbs. Oh, is it lunchtime yet? Our hands on our lap. When they ought to be in the air, praising God and shout, lips shouting His praise. Yet we come in here and we. We practice being quiet. We don't want to offend nobody. We practice being quiet in here. Then we go out there and we continue being quiet about God's love. It's time we loosen up, Christian. It's time we get out of that box of comfort or out of that box of fear. And we start praising the Lord. We ought to practice in here and then take our praise out there. Amen. Because one day we're going to be sitting around the very throne of God with a whole bunch of people. And we're all going to be shouting. The Bible says the Lamb is worthy to receive honor and glory and praises and blessing. We're going to be doing that for all of eternity. So we might as well practice right now. Amen. Thank Jesus that the love of God gives us a liberated life. We don't have to live. Like we're worried about what somebody might think of us. The only person you ought to worry about what, thinks of you, who thinks, what he thinks of you is the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And if you please in him, who cares what anybody else says or thinks? You please the Lord with your life, with your worship, with your praise. Don't worry about what somebody else thinks. You want to run out, run out. You want to shout, shout. You want to pop Kayla in the head, pop Kayla in the head. Whatever you want to do. I'm just kidding, Kayla. <laughs> But praise the Lord. Let, let, let's let loose. Let's let our worship rise. Let's praise the Lord. Remember, we have a liberated life. Sixthly, this morning, the love of God gives me sweet salvation from wrath. Sweet salvation from wrath. Look at verse 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. You may be new to church. Angel had a friend one time that said this to us. She said, you always talk about getting saved. She said, what's that mean, saved from what? Well, this verse tells us we're saved from wrath. Saved from what wrath? What's that? Well, we're saved from an eternity in hell. Is what we're saved from. So don't be ashamed to tell somebody you're saved. You are. You're saved from the wrath of hell. Because of the blood of Jesus, you're saved. Being justified by his blood. And that just means believing that Jesus shed his blood for you and I as a payment for our sins. The Bible says that all have sinned. And the wages of sin is death. 
But Jesus said, oh, no, no. I already paid that price. You don't have to pay that price. When you put your faith in me, you don't have to pay the price. You don't have to die for your sin because I took care of that on Calvary's cross. And instead of dying, you have eternal life in me if you'll just believe. And praise God, it was 1986 when I sat at the kitchen table with my sister and my pastor and an associate pastor from the church and my sister and I on December 1st, 1986, both confessed our faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And my sister and I share a spiritual birthday. We were both saved on December 1st, 1986. That's my dad's physical birthday. He was born on December 1st. So that's a special day for all three of us. I'm glad that I got saved. I'm glad I'm saved from wrath because of the love of God. Luke 2.30 says, For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Could you say that this morning? Could you say in your eyes that you've seen the salvation of the Lord in your life? You've seen, you know in your heart that Jesus has saved you. And then you can repeat with me this morning, Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Lord, thank you for saving me. I pray that everybody in here this morning has seen God's salvation. <clears throat> and that you know the love of God. If you haven't, you can. You just have to believe. <laughs> if anything I've talked about was complicated today and you didn't quite understand, let me give you two words as we close that exemplify and simplify the love of God for you. Here they are. Write these down in the outline. The two words are this. His coming and His cross. His coming and His cross. If you ever begin to doubt God's love for you, you just think about those two things. His coming. For God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son that whoever would believe in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. That's the coming of the Son of God. God loved you so much. He so loved the world that He sent His Son. That if we just believe that He's the Son of God, believe that He died on the cross to pay the price for our sin, believe that He rose again, we'd not perish. We wouldn't die. But we'd have everlasting life. We celebrate His coming every year at Christmas. We celebrate the fact that the Son of God came because God so loved us. So His coming... And in his cross, how could you look at the cross and what Jesus had to bear and doubt his love for you? The Bible says he despised the shame, enduring the cross for the joy that was set before him. The joy was the day that you were going to be saved because of his blood shed for you. The joy was you getting to spend eternity in him, with him in heaven one day. That's the joy that kept Jesus on that cross. That's the joy that kept him there. His coming, the fact that the Son of God left heaven above and came to earth because God loved you. And he came because of his cross. He came to pay the price for your sin and my sin, the, the price that we could never pay. We could never earn it. We could never be good enough, smart enough, wealthy enough to earn that precious love of God. And salvation for you. It's free. It's free, Rodney. It's free to all who would receive his love. If you're willing to believe those two simple things that we ended with, there's no reason you can't be today saying, I'm saved. Right. I'm saved. If you would believe that Jesus is the Son of God who came because God loved you, who died because God loved you and he wanted to make sure your sins were paid for on that cross. Jesus took all the sin you'll ever commit, all the sin that I'll ever commit, and he left it nailed to that cross. The Bible says he's a propitiation for our sins, which means he took our sin upon himself and replaced our sinful garments with a robe of righteousness. And we were justified, as we said earlier, by his blood. And when God looks at you after you've placed your faith in Jesus, God sees you as righteous. You're saved. You're saved from wrath. Who wouldn't want that? Who would walk out of here today? Not want that. Jesus said if you reject it, 
you'll do it over my dead body because he died so you would be free so you could be saved because of his great love for you I'm excited about his love I'm excited about his love I pray you are too and if you need to choose his love today and be saved I'll be here at this altar during this time of invitation you step out and you come as our instrumentalists come I'm going to pray that if you come, need to come and be saved today, you come meet me at this altar. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you love that we, we don't have the words to describe your love. If we tried, we could never speak enough. Come up, be clever enough to come up with words to describe how enormous your love is for us. But we thank you for it. What we do understand is that you loved us enough to send your son who died in our place. And there could be any, if there be anybody right now who needs to choose to believe that for the first time today, I pray you draw them to yourself. They choose Jesus and walk out and walk out of here today saying, I'm saved. Lord, you can Holy Spirit speak to somebody's heart right now. Since we trust your word. You send the Holy Spirit to speak to us. I pray the Holy Spirit is speaking to somebody right now. They're going to step out the aisle. They will come and choose Jesus today and be saved. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Let's all stand and I'll be right here. If you need to come do any business with the Lord today, you step out and come. If you need to take somebody's hand, come with them and do that.
church. Let me introduce you today. Somebody you already know. Eddie, come on up here. Eddie, you want to come down with, with your dad this morning here? Eddie uh, came to me Wednesday night. We met for a few minutes after church. And, and he said that he felt Holy Spirit leading him and Anna to come and join our fellowship. And so uh, we're so excited for that. Yeah. Baptized and members in Alpha Baptist, and so uh, we'll present them this morning as, as men for membership by the profession of faith and baptism in the Lord Jesus Christ. So we'll start with the pretty one first. Anna? <laughs> you thought I was going to say you, didn't you? <laughs> uh, do I hear a motion to accept Anna into our membership? Motion. And second? Second. Now God's people said? Amen. Amen. And how about Andy here? Do we hear a motion to accept into our membership? <laughs> and a second? Thank you. All God's people said? Amen. Amen. Now, Eddie grew up here, so some of you were here when he was here. You're baptized in Fairfield, right? So uh, he's baptized here, and so praise the Lord for that. That God drew him back, drew him back home, and so we're glad. And we're so thankful for you. You did a great job up there. Uh, it only gets hard, so we're just so, so blessed by you. So you guys uh, can have a seat for just a minute, and then after church. Uh, would you feel comfortable with everybody coming by and welcoming you? Okay. Our church, you come by and you welcome Eddie and Ann into our, into our fellowship. Now, I think we've got one more this morning here. Uh, we talked a little bit more service. This is, this is Kendall Shelton. And uh, she's a little bashful. Her mom may say disagree. But Kendall and, and my wife, Angela, have, had a, have formed a special bond. Angela and her, Angela worked with her at school. And, and Kendall told Angela, she's... She, and, and her mom told us that uh, uh, she's been asking a lot of questions about being saved. And, and Kim was asking the Lord to save her. And Amen. so, uh, Amen. she wanted to come and let the church know this morning that she's going to walk out of church this morning saying, I'm saved, right? Amen. 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 And, 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 and when did this happen? This past week, right? You said you, you praised your house and asked Jesus to save you. And so... We're so thankful for her, and we're going to we're going to disciple her, and I know she's enjoying me with our kids, and we'll look forward to a day I get to dunk you under the water. How about that? <laughs> so anyway, but we, we rejoice with you, Kendall. So if you and your mom want to stand here, and everybody will come by and congratulate you on your decision to be saved, amen. And, and we'll come by and, touch, and congratulate you on that. So if you and your mom want to sit down for just a minute, we'll bring you back up here, okay? So thank you all so much. That's a good day, amen. amen. God just bless you. Amen. Angela brought Kendall by my room there at school Friday, and, uh, and we talked a little bit. And so it's a great, great day. Uh, what a blessing it is to see to see somebody give their heart and life to Jesus Christ. And so uh, so blessed this morning and for Eddie and Anna. Kendall all like, yeah, so amen. so blessed. So, let me go over a couple of announcements with you, and then I'll. I'll let you go. Can I say yeah. something? Go right ahead. Prayer for your announcement. Yes. If, if you're not seeing the sweet spirit and feeling it, you're missing it. Yeah. I mean, Wednesday night, it was such a sweet spirit. Yeah. Scott's not paying me to plug Wednesday night. I promise you, this is for me. I, I just love it. Wednesday night, it was so strong. Yeah. I texted with Isaac after the church, and he said he felt it. Mm -hmm. It's just so sweet. God is moving. God has never left us. We left Him. Yeah. So I want to say God is back. That ain't a true statement. <laughs> right. It's just right. we need to be where we need to be. Absolutely. So if you're watching this on Facebook, and if you are able, you need to come. Amen. 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 That's right. Good Thank word. God. Yeah, good word, Robert. Thank you for sharing. Yes, if, uh, if, if you're used to our 10 and 12 that we're having on Wednesday nights, it's tripled or quadrupled. We have, I don't know how many we had here Wednesday night, but we had a, a good crowd in here in our youth. I don't know, 12 or 15 youth and a bunch of kids. And uh, it's, God, it's just going. And that's, so I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited with you, with you, Robert. So uh, Wednesday nights are special. Now, we'll be back in here this Wednesday evening. And we have a great time of worship. Isaac and Kayla lead us in worship, a song or two on Wednesday evenings. And then we pray together. We all go our own way. So we'll be in here this week. But I want to invite you, um, adults, on Wednesday nights in two weeks on the 23rd, we're going to start a new book study. It's a book called I Will, and uh, it, is, it is powerful, I promise you. Uh, everybody who does this book study is going to look at some things like they've never looked at them before about, uh, about the Lord, about church membership. And so I want to invite you to come be part of that. And here's the cool part. 
It's just on my heart that every now and then we take some time and get outside of these walls. So we're not having Wednesday night adults starting the 23rd for six weeks in here. We're having Wednesday nights at Davy Crockett. Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> we're, we're meeting at the rest. Of... <laughs> so we're meeting over there. Now, now, you are welcome to eat if you want to eat, but there's you don't have to eat. Uh, you can order you something to eat while we're having our Bible study. But um, if you did not pick up a book Wednesday night and you want to be part of our Bible study, I've got about six or seven more books in my office. Uh, just come see me. And we're going to start in two weeks. Next, or this Wednesday, I'll have our kind of our reading guide and, and some questions to go along with each section we'll be reading that we'll be discussing in our, our time together. This is going to be four sessions at Davy Crockett, and there'll be two kind of independent sessions where you're on your own. We're going to do two mission projects that you can either do with the group or do with your spouse or do by yourself. One's going to be in-house and one's going to be out, out of the house. And so uh, I'm looking forward to it. And I believe God is going to take this and bless it tremendously. So come be part of our book study. Again, come see me after service if you need a book, and I'll make sure you get one. Uh, so we've got, like I said, i got six or seven more books in my office if you'd like to be part of the book study. Uh, also, if you take your check your outfits there, uh, before I do any more, I want to thank Hannah and our children and all of those this morning. Man, I, I could barely preach. I had some biscuits and gravy right before I came up here today. They fixed us a Valentine's breakfast today. So let's give our kids a hand. What a great time for you. Absolutely. I walked in and, and Thomas and Carter poured me a glass of juice. I didn't have to do anything. They, they were taking care. They were a good way to make your deeds there. So uh, uh, it, was a, it was a lot of fun to get the fellowship and appreciate the kids and handing your vision for that. And, and uh, what a great time. There's other things going to be coming up for our kids to do. And so excited about that. Um, also, uh, in your bulletin, I'll go quickly here. On the 26th, Saturday the 26th, uh, we have uh, been given several of the, the we've got several items from uh, the playground at Russellville Church of God that we're going to take and build our own playground with. There, we've got a few things here, but we've got some remaining things that are so large they're going to have to be loaded on a trailer. And they need to get rid of that stuff. And so we are going to meet on the 26th at noon over at the Russellville Church of God. Robert Traxel is going, going to have his trailer, uh, but he can't load it by himself. So we need some men. It won't take long. Uh, maybe an hour, maybe not much more than that, if that long, to get things loaded on the trailer. And all we're going to do is bring it over here and take it off the trailer and set it over in the yard over here where it's going to be set up eventually. So if you can help load that trailer, the more the merrier. Uh, the, the more we have, the less likely our backs are to get hurt as we, if we try to lift it by ourselves. So if you're able, just remember that. We'll keep that in the bulletin as a reminder next week too. But uh, the 26th is when we'll do that. And then Motown Madness is coming up. Isaac, you want to say anything about Motown Madness? It will be fun. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be the 25th and the 26th of February. That's coming up very quickly. And we need to know by this Wednesday if you plan on attending and your shirt size. Uh, we always have a great time. It's like a, almost like a revival for the youth. All of Morristown youth usually shows up. They have great praise and worship services. We're going to have a lock-in over here in the sanctuary. We're going to go Saturday and eat a lot of food. We're going to go have a scavenger hunt at the mall. And just we have a bunch of fun stuff that's planned for our youth. And I just want to say how proud I am of these guys. Yeah. Because church, these kids and this youth, the reason that this program is, we're seeing a rebound is because they're inviting their friends. Yes, and we need to use that as an example. Because yeah. how many people do we have in our workplace? or encounter on a daily basis that we can say, hey, come to church with me. Okay. There's a seat beside me that's open, come sit with me. Okay. And that's what these kids are doing. And we need to do the same thing. Right. Thank you, Kayla. Is London would say, preach it, sister. <laughs> <laughs> So Motown Madison, and also one more thing, and we'll be done. Uh, on the 27th, uh, here in our service, we're going to have a note burning service. Yeah. Uh, for we are we are debt free. We paid off the North Shaw Family Life Center, and uh, so we're going to take that note and burn it and celebrate all that God has yeah. done. And uh, we begin this year talking about God's provisions, and uh, He's been providing uh, guitar players and piano players and even more. Right? So uh, uh, God is awesome. He's blessing us. And to whom much is given, much is required. And we want to serve God with all that we have. All right. Anybody got a word this morning? Something I've forgotten? Something God's got on your heart? You'd just like to share this morning? Don't hold back. 
Your testimony may be what maybe what somebody needs to hear this morning. Anybody? Glad I'm saved. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Well, if not, then I hope you have a great day. Uh, let's take what we've heard about God's love, what was sung about, what we read in God's word about. Let's let it uh, just overflow in our heart and uh, ooze out <laughs> up to all the people we come in contact yes. with this week. Let's love them then like God loves them most and show them God's love. They'll be drawn to it through your actions and you love and show them. Don't forget, uh, after uh, we pray and dismiss, Kendall and her mom are going to be up here and and then uh, Anna and Eddie will be up here and just come by and greet them and give them the Fairfield Secret handshake, whatever that is. And just welcome, welcome, congratulate uh, Kendall on her salvation and just welcome uh, Eddie and Anna into our membership. So God bless y'all. Have a great day. Isaac, would you care to dismiss us in prayer? Uh, dear God, I just want to thank you uh, for what you're doing here in Fairfield, dear God. Uh, you know, we've seen so much change over the past month. Dear God, it's been a good change, change in the right direction, uh, dear Lord. And I just thank you for that. Uh, you bless me beyond all belief, dear God. Um, and thank you for blessing this church as well. Um, I pray that we um, take Scott's message and take it out to the world, dear Lord, um, and hold it with us throughout the week. Uh, and I just pray that we invite more people to church, dear God, uh, and that we use that example uh, set by the youth, dear God. Uh, that fall Wednesday, maybe we'll have, you know, 24 people. Well, let's make it 50 people, dear God. Uh, and everybody just invites one person. Um, I pray that uh, you be with the lost, dear God. Uh, and be with us and help us to be humble before you uh, and confess our sins to you, dear God. It's in your sweet and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.